Hello everybody and welcome to I guess my first question and answer session. Um, I am Rainbow Red Panda and like I said last week I am doing this question and answer session. Um, questions that were submitted to me by you guys through YouTube comments and then I had one Twitter submission um, that I just, I don't know, I, got, I asked for questions so now I have them. So I put them all together and I have a lot, a lot more questions than I thought so it probably won't be just like, I said maybe questions and then like random facts but I think I have enough questions. I think I have 16 questions. Um, I wrote them all on note cards individually so it's it's going to be a fun time. So. Let's get into it, I guess, to celebrate my six months on YouTube, I will do this question and answer session. Um, so the first question is from Robotech00, and he asks, are you ever going to do a collections video? One day. Um, all of my comics are not in the same place. Um, I have a very small apartment, and I do not think that it could withstand all of the comic books. Just all the books in general, because I have a lot of books, too. Um, I have, like, boxes and boxes of books and comic books and just all kinds of stuff like that. I have a ton of graphic novels as well. Like, even before I went to comic shops regularly, I would still go, like, whenever I was in a big city that had one, and I would just compile lots of them. So... Yeah, one day I will do a collections video whenever everything's sort of in the same spot. Because right now all I have in this apartment, like I've been in this apartment for about a year. So all I really have is stuff that's come out in like the last year or so. Basically all the comics that I've bought in the last year are here. Everything else is not. So I don't think it would be that interesting. Like most of the stuff that's here is something you could go to your comic book store and find on the shelves. So doing one right now would not really be very interesting. But one day I will do a, a collections video. Okay, Corey's Comics asks, what's your favorite indie comic? So many different ways I could answer this. Everybody has a different um, definition, I guess, of what they consider to be an indie comic. Most people think of indie comics as anything that's not Marvel or DC, which is sad because I think a lot of um, other publishers are really, really giving them a run for their money. Um, if <laughs> I guess a lot of people know, think of me and my videos, especially my reviews, as, oh, she's the girl that does indie comics, and that's fine, like, I do not mind that at all. Um, but truly, like, when I think of indie comics, I think of, like, whenever I went to Cake in Chicago, and it was stuff that isn't really published, and if it is, it's like a very, very small local publisher, all of that kind of stuff is what I think of as indie comics, and if you're doing it, by my definition, my favorite indie comic is this one. It is the Gremlins movie incident. It is the cutest thing ever. It is a true story based on taking children to go see Gremlins and why the PG-13 rating is now in effect. Gremlins, spoiler, is the reason that PG-13 exists. Um, this was written by Kara Bean and you could find her at... beandoodling.blogspot.com so if you guys are interested in seeing any of her comics you can get them there um, I don't know that I don't even see a publisher that who made this little book that I have but I think this is like the awesomest little comic ever I got this at cake this year and it's like my favorite I give it to all kinds of people and I'm like read this it's so cute like it's true and it's cute and like I mean it's not it's nothing fancy it's black and white and it's all that. And so my definition of indie comics, this is one of my favorites, but I guess the more popular um, definition of indie comics, I would have to say, um, I don't even know if I'd consider Image to be an indie, an indie company because it's so up and coming. Um, I'm probably going to have to say The Accelerators just because Blue Juice Comics is, is it's the only comic that they have right now. Um, that one for sure is definitely one of my favorites. It's only on two issues though, so I mean there's always room for that to change. Ask me whenever I do my next Q&A and I may have a different answer, but I guess for now, um, I promoted enough. I would have to say the accelerators, but in reality, stuff like this is my favorite. If you guys ever get a chance to go to like indie shows or like stuff where they just have like local publishing comics, like definitely go like I got so much stuff at cake and some of it is a little bit pricier but it's the people like I bought this from Caribbean like I bought it from her she drew me a picture inside and it was awesome like you know I might have paid more for that than I did a single issue of like a DC comic but 
I don't mind that because I'm all about supporting local stuff. So I actually don't remember how much I paid for that. So I mean, it may have only been like a dollar. I really don't remember. But I don't know. I guess if that answers your question, then there you go. Um, Rick's Doom asks, besides comics, what other things are you into? Well, today... I have been into saving baby birds because that is what I did. I found a little baby bird on the sidewalk and I have been tending to it all day. Um, I don't know. I do a lot of different things. I tend to be somebody that I do one thing at a time and I do it for like a while and then I'll kind of move. Like I have interests but I only do like one of them at a time. Um, I play video games. I watch movies. I play with my bunnies. I read a lot whether it's comics or other books. Um, I knit. I, I'm totally like an old person. I knit. Um, I cook. I bake. And I enjoy doing those things. I think I think it's awesome. Um, I don't know. I play like tabletop games. Um, I would love to learn how to play Dungeons and Dragons, but I don't really know anyone that plays, so I don't have anyone to teach me and or play with. So one day I'll learn, but I don't know yet. Um, I don't even know. I like to go and like walk around. I don't. I don't do a lot of outside stuff because. I'm a very, very pale person, but in theory, I would like to go outside and like, I don't know, walk and go to parks and stuff, but I just, I don't do it very often. If I do, it's at like 11 o'clock at night and people yell at me to like, go back inside because it's too late for me to be out. So, yeah, um, I don't know, I'm into like, I'm into a lot of things, you know, I, I, I like anime and weird food from Japan and... I don't even know, like, I have so many different interests, and they're all so random, and sometimes I forget that I like things, and then I see it, and it's something that I haven't seen for a while, I'm like, that! Um, like, I devoted a month of my, well, not really a month, I devoted, I think, three days to learning how to solve a Rubik's Cube, and I can totally do that, like, that's, that's an interest of mine now, is, like, remembering how I did it, and I don't know, like, I sound weird and stuff talking about that, but I'm into pandas, too, like, I have... These are my like salt and pepper shakers. Um, I was given to them for Christmas this year. They're like pandas. Like I, I am. I'm really into stuffed animals. It's ridiculous. Like for for a person that's not a child, I have way too many stuffed animals. But I mean, you've seen Norton. Um, if you guys followed me on Twitter from the beginning, the first episode of Comic Time that I ever shot, um, I had an audience of stuffed animals on my table because I couldn't just talk to a camera. Now I only have one. There's a donkey behind the camera staring at me. But other than that, I don't have any more stuffed animals. So I'm slowly getting over that. Um, and I don't know. Those are my, my weird interests. I, I don't know if that answers your question at all. But I don't know. That's what I'm into. <laughs> um, ITFC53 asks, what are the most underrated titles on the shelves right now in your opinion? Pretty much anything that is not Marvel in DC, um, in my opinion, is underrated. I come from a shop that basically only carries Marvel in DC, so, you know, if I want anything, I have to order it. Um, they do carry Saga now, limitedly. Um, I still order it specially. I don't know, it's just, it sucks to walk, I, I love small shops and I love small towns and all of that, but like, it sucks to walk into a shop and you have to order the majority of the stuff because it's not a big seller in that area. I would love to see more, like I've been reading Helheim from Oni Press and I would love to see them come up. A lot of the previews in the books that they have look really interesting so far though from them. I believe I've only read Helheim but there's a lot of stuff that I would love to order. I'm about to, I think, go through my image, or not my image, my um, DC and Marvel stacks and just say, okay, I'm cutting all these series to read more indie stuff because I think so much of it is underrated. Like, there's, I mean, I want to start reading Chew. I think it looks really decent, um, obviously. I do, I still haven't done the review for it yet, but I am now a fan of Morning Glories. I think that it is really good. It's sort of more of a well-known, I guess, indie comic, though. So I don't know that that would count. Accelerators, once again, um, it is not even in very many comic shops. And I think that it should be. And they are sort of trying to get the word out to the masses about them. And they're saying, you know, like I was told at Comic-Con, and I've, I've said it in other videos, like, if you guys have, like, an indie comic that you really like, and you know that it's not sold in a lot of stores because it's something that's local or something like that, like, take a picture of it and send it to 
them. Like, Blue Juice loves for you to take a picture of the accelerators in your shop and send it to them. Tell them, you know, oh, well, I live in St. Louis and we carry the accelerators because then they know. Like, they don't have a list of everywhere that sells their stuff. So they, you know, they love to know that. And I think that that's really important, too, in getting the word out about stuff because some comics are, like, so, I guess, indie that, like, on the weekly comic lists, depending on where you go to look, they're not even on there. So you don't even know that they came out. And I think that's really unfortunate that not everybody knows about certain comics just because, you know, they're not they're not given, like, any sort of publicity at all. And that's one reason why I do try to do reviews about comics that I don't think are as well known. I think Dark Horse is totally underrated. Um, whenever I first started finding people that I knew that liked comics, I would like say like, oh, I love reading The Answer and I love reading, you know, the, I'm looking forward to the Ch Killjoys coming out and then, you know, Umbrella Academy and all of these other titles and everyone was like, those are all Dark Horse titles. Like, those are so like depressing and sad and I'm like no like not all dark just because dark is in the name of the thing doesn't mean that it's sad I think Dark Horse is totally underrated and I don't know if it's just because of their name or what but they totally get a bad rap at least in this area and I wish that I could change that so pretty much anything that Dark Horse writes I think is totally underrated they they are really starting to catch up it, like you kind of, I, I think the top three comic companies right now would be Marvel, DC, and Image. I think Dark Horse is totally coming up there and totally catching up with them, for sure. Um, and then it's just a matter of time with other things. I think that people are starting to sort of read lesser known comics right now, and I love that. I love that fact, and I love that I can do, you know, reviews on things and get comments like, oh, this looks really interesting, like, I want to go and pick this up now. Like, that's awesome. That's sort of why I do this, just so that people, you know, can find comics that they like, so... I don't know, pretty much pretty much anything really I think is underrated. Even if it's stuff that I don't read. Like I don't read the the ongoing Star Trek series. I read like the little mini series that they have every once in a while, but I don't read the ongoing one just because I missed out on it in the beginning and now it's so far back that I just haven't I haven't caught up. But I like all of that. I I liked like the before Intro to Darkness or whatever before the last movie and like whenever they do a movie stuff like that, like I love those series. The Star Wars series is supposed to be really good. I haven't read it yet. Um, I still have it, and I haven't read it yet, but pretty much everything. <laughs> Just read everything and go broke. That's that's what I say. Don't don't listen to me. Um, Dark Rider two fifty nine says, "Do you buy old back issues?" Um, I try. Um, once again, limited selection in comic book store, um, and so I buy what I can. Um, I think this last new comic book day, my store had a sale on old back issues, and so I bought a bunch of old Wolverines, um, like Wolverine, like, 305, and things like that. Um, I haven't read them yet, but they look really, really good. Like, I'm totally a sucker for, like, cheap comics. Like, if I can be in a store and find the comic for, like, 25 cents or cheaper, I will definitely look into it. I don't buy anything that's super, super old yet because a lot of stuff that I would want is stuff that I just can't afford right now. But I, I like to to buy back issues. And even like of the newer series, I like to start at the beginning. I will not start a series for the most part. There are some exceptions. Like if I'm buying a really old comic, then yeah, I'm probably not going to get, you know, Amazing Spider-Man number one. But if I can get like an awesome thing on like number 352, um... <laughs> then I would, I would look into that. And if I got, you know, an, an issue like that, I would read it. But, you know, like, the new Hulk series, the new Iron Man series, all of that, like, I started reading those a couple months ago, and I got the first issue. Um, my store still had, you know, the first issues in their back. Um, so I, I got those. But I, I don't know. I mean, I try to buy old back issues, but it's just kind of with everything else. Like, when, when money is limited, um, I guess I kind of go with new releases more. But in one day, whenever I have lots and lots of unlimited money, which hopefully someday I'm, I'm at least a little bit ahead where I can, can afford other things, but I don't know, one day. Um, okay. ITFC53 um, asks, Are there any series that have been canceled recently that you think shouldn't have been? Yes. Um, there's a couple. Morbius, The Living Vampire. I 
I know not a lot of people liked it, but the people that did like it, they really liked it. And I was one of those people. I really, really liked it. I think I, I think the last issue, it either comes out this month or it came out already. I, I feel like it came out already, but I was reading something about it yesterday, and I feel like they make it sound like there's still one left. Um, I'm not for sure. It might just be that it's in my pile and I haven't read it yet. And if that's the case, it's going to be so sad. I hate when series end sort of prematurely to me. Like, I feel like there's so many things they could have done. There's so many characters that they could have brought back. I just feel like it wasn't given enough of a chance. And then you have other series that, you know, are still around. And I'm like, that series is totally as good as, as Morbius was. Um, also, then you have a long-running series like Journey into Darkness. And, like... It, it shouldn't have happened. Like, that should not have ended. I didn't read that religiously, but, I mean, I read part of it, and so many great characters come out of that. I mean, I, I they've, they've sort of canceled it before, so I feel like it will come back, but I just, I don't think it should have ended right now. I mean, especially with, with the, like, all of the success that Thor's had right now. Like, I know that it mainly followed Siv and everything, but I don't know. I feel like that was definitely one. And then you have some... Like, I've been reading, there's, like, petitions going around to say, like, Wolverine and the X-Men and stuff like that, because I guess, like, it's on the, the verge of being cancelled, and that just makes, like, that's not a title that I read. Maybe that's why it's getting cancelled, because it's, like, the one X-Men title that I don't read at the moment. Um, but I, don't, I hate when series get cancelled. Like, I'd rather them just transition into something else. Like, when Amazing Spider-Man became Superior Spider-Man, like, you know, Amazing Spider-Man didn't end, it just, it just changed. I'd rather see that than a, than a series cancelled. I hate when series get cancelled, even if it's something that I don't read. And I always try to pick up the last issue of like every cancelled series, even if it's not something that I read. And it sucks because I'm like, oh, well this was a really good issue, like, I need to buy the rest of the series now. So yes. Those are the recent ones, and then I'm sure there will be others in the future, and I'm not looking forward to it because I just, I don't like when things get cancelled. That goes for television as well. Okay, my Twitter question, um, DC, Marvel, or indie publishers? If I had to get rid of two of those, I would get rid of DC and Marvel for sure. Um, I, I really like indie books more. There are a few Marvel books and maybe one or two DCs that I don't think, you know, I would be happy living without, but I could do it if I absolutely had to. You know, I mean, I lived before I read comics, so I guess I... I guess I could live afterwards if I just had, you know, only Image or only Dark Horse. I'm picking only one indie publisher. I feel like that would be so hard because you had Image, Dark Horse, they're all so good to me. Um, but yeah, I would definitely pick an indie publisher over Marvel and DC any day. I feel like, especially with DC now, they're, they're just after your money. I don't know if they really necessarily care about anything else. I think they just want your money. I don't... I don't even know if they want that with all of the decisions they've been making lately with that woman and all of that. Um, that's a whole nother thing. I'm not going to get into that and make this video super, super long. But yeah, that's what I have for that. Indie publishers all the way. Sleepy Reader 666 says, how did you get deeply into comics? How did I get deeply into comics? Coheed and Cambria. Um, I don't know. That's They are the band that got me to read comics on a monthly basis. Um, their band is sort of, their albums are all a continuing story and then they made comic books about the continuing story which then turned into trades that were a continuing story which then turned into trade hardbacks that are a continuing story and they've sort of branched out since then and had, you know, like Claudio Sanchez wrote other things besides just the Coheed stories but that is what got me into reading them religiously every month. Um, so that was like 2005 maybe um so that's what that's what got me like hooked on them all the time and it sucks because I am from a small town it does not have a comic book store there is not like where I live now would be the closest comic book store from where I'm from originally so that would be at least an hour's drive one way so you know it wasn't something that I, I really grew up with I did a little bit I'll get into that with a later question but they're what got me saying, okay, I need to read comics, like, all the time. Like, I would go to concerts, and then it would be, like, the day that, you know, their books came out, and I was like, I need these. Like, I, I needed them. So, yeah, everyone else was buying, like, concert shirts, and I'm like, give me all these comic books. Like, I will take them all. So, 
that's kind of how I got into comics. I was into other things before before them, but I'll get into that again later, like I said. Um, Robotech Double Zero asks, if you had to get someone into comics, what book would you tell them to read? Well, if it's a random stranger that I know nothing about, I don't know. I feel like I'd have to definitely ask them some questions to figure out if I need to give them a main title or an indie title. Um, after that, if I was going to suggest an indie title to anybody, I'd probably give them Saga because I don't know anybody who doesn't like Saga. If you don't like Saga, I would just like you to comment in the section just because I want to know that there's somebody out there that doesn't like Saga. You don't have to love it. You don't have to be obsessed with it, but I don't know anybody who just doesn't like it. I've never heard anything negative about Saga besides the one guy in the last book that commented. and We're not going to talk about that because he was just mad that... Just get Saga and read the questions, and there's just one that's just going to infuriate you. Um, I would do Saga for sure, but if you know that it's someone who's like into super... Because so many people now, they watch the movies. They watch the Batman movies, they watch the Spider-Man movies, they watch the Iron Man movies, the Avengers movies. They watch all these movies, and so then they want to read that. So then I would suggest, if you like the Wolverine movies, read Wolverine. Read the X-Men. Read that kind of stuff. If you're into Batman, read Batman. You know, if you're into Ninja Turtles, read Ninja Turtles. If you're into Teen Titans, read Teen Titans. Like, if you're into Magic the Gathering, read Magic the Gathering. Like, I haven't read the Magic the Gathering comics books, though. But I've always kind of wanted to. Because I like Magic the Gathering. But, I don't know. That's how I would do. I would just start. I mean, if it's a close friend of mine, I would know, like, what they're into, what they're not. So I would know, you know, what to give them. But I feel like there's such a diverse, like spectrum of comics that he, I could probably find like the person who would say no I hate all comics I will never read a comic I feel like I could find a comic for them you know I mean everybody writes comics if you're like hardcore into rap like rappers write comics um I own one of them and I don't remember what it's called it's like 12 steps to I don't even know I don't remember I have the first issue <laughs> I don't remember what they're called but I mean everybody reads comics so you know everyone will write a comic there is a comic I'm sure about hating comics and I only know this from reddit so don't judge me but if you go into like adult 18 and over like sex stores there are comic books in there and they are weird and gross and I would not suggest buying them but they're strange and if you're just completely into that kind of stuff there's a comic book for you there's it's that simple there's a comic book for everyone I, I really believe that. It's just like, I think there's a type of music for everyone, there's a TV series for everyone, there's a comic book for everybody. Don't let anyone ever tell you there's not. So that is what I'd tell them to read, is just, I don't know, I mean, with the superheroes it's easy, you find what superhero you're into and you read it. You know, I would say definitely start on, you know, the most recent series, if you don't like that writer, you know, go to the movie that you really liked was probably based off of a certain comic series. So go to that series. Find who that is, buy the trade, buy the issue, whatever you can get your hands on at the time. If you're just doing starting out, I would say probably Saga because Saga is cleaning up the world right now. <laughs> like, everyone loves Saga. It's won so many awards, just all of that. And, I don't know, that's just, that's just what I would suggest. Okay. Um, Sleepy Reader 666 asks, what supervillain would you be? so many different ways I can't answer this question. Um, one of my favorite supervillains is the Joker. Um, he's just, I don't know, like ever since I was a little kid I've always loved the Joker and I don't know that I would be him but I would want, like I feel like that would, that's the answer I would say at first but then I would have to think about it and after I thought about it for a while I probably want to be someone else <laughs> just because I don't know that I'd want to be crazy all the time and, and all of that. I'd want to be like, I don't even know. Um, what super villain would I want to be? And then the nat the next natural thing would be to say, oh, I want to be, you know, a girl superhero because I'm a female, but I'm all about, you know, not not caring about the fact that I'm a girl. I I'd still be a boy superhero. Um, I don't know. I have. I've always kind of felt felt for the villains, and like even in Villains Month, like they sort of. Some of them make me feel for them. Like, I feel for some of these, these super villains, you know? Because, you know, they're villains and no one really likes them. But, I, I guess I will. I'll stick with the Joker just because he's always 
I don't know. I mean, just his personality and just... Like, literally, I remember being a kid and watching, you know, not the best Joker of all time, but, you know, just watching him, you know, in cartoons and stuff and just being like, what is he doing? Like, why is he so silly? And, like, all of that. And I'm I'm so random and everything, and I feel like he can be totally just as random as me. So I'd probably make a good Joker if I really tried, but I just... I'll, I'll go with the Joker. I'll I'll think of a different answer and answer this a different time, a different way. But for right now, I'll go with the Joker because that's just what popped into my head first. And as a child, I was always told to go with your first answer. So I guess I'll go with it. But I feel like it's not who I would... I, I, I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or something. It would not be my final answer. But it will be my one for right now. Okay, Robotech00 asks, if you had to drop everything but one title, what would it be and why? <sighs> I know what I would drop if I had to drop everything from Marvel except for one thing. I would keep Deadpool. <laughs> um, but if I had to, and if I had to drop everything from DC, I would drop everything except for Justice League Dark. Um, if I had to drop everything except for on an image, it, it would be Saga, um, as hard as that is for me to say because I love revival. Um, if I had to drop everything from Dark Horse except for one thing, it would be, I don't even know, because most of the stuff that I read from Dark Horse isn't an ongoing thing. It's like mini series. So right now I would say the True Life of the Fabulous Killjoys bit ends next month. So then I would have a new thing to get. Um, and then of course from Abstract, Terry Moore is his own thing. So I could still keep Rachel Rising. If I had to, to keep put all of those in a list and only read one of them, I'd probably have to go with Saga still because I just I love Saga. Um, I, I hate that because I feel like I should have a better answer, but that's that's this thing is like Saga has me so hooked and I feel like I'm selling out to them because all of my answers have been Saga, but it's true. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say I would keep like My Little Pony. I love My Little Pony. I'm not going to bash the ponies, but I mean, it's not the one title I, I would choose to read for the rest of my life. And back to the question of recently canceled comics. Um, I don't know that it was necessarily canceled, but... Now I don't remember what it's called. Um, Haunt. I am very upset with everything that's happened with Haunt. Um, the way that it ended, it was supposed to, you know, be part of Spawn and then come back to Haunt and it just, it's never happened and it angers me so much. So back to that question, Haunt. Haunt is one that I'm also very upset about. Okay, Sleepy Reader 666 asks, do you remember the first comic that hooked you? If by hooked, the one you mean, like, got me to read comics obsessively, then it would go back to the Coheed and Cambria thing. But if you just mean, like, random comics, I would say... What was the first comic that I ever just sort of randomly read? It was definitely a Spider-Man title. It was probably, like, Amazing Spider-Man. I don't remember the issue. I don't... It wasn't something that I owned. It was like, you know, you're at a friend's house and you're reading this. And you're like, oh, mommy, I like Spider-Man. I'm gonna read this one. Like, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's sort of what got me into comics. Because later I'll go into a thing about how I was traumatized by comics, you know, as as a child. But I, I got over it eventually and I started reading, you know, here and there. I would read things whenever I was at people's houses that had stuff. So... But once again, that got me, like, buying them on a monthly basis would be the Coheed and Cambria, the Second Stage Turbine Blade, and all of, all of those comics um, got me to where I am today. But I would still, even if I had never found that band and all of that, I would still, I mean, I would definitely still have the Umbrella Academy from My Chemical Romance and all of that. A lot of the bands that I, I like have comic books, so I would still have that going for me. Um... But I think I think Spider Man was the first comic that I just sort of naturally read. Uh, also, Ninja Turtles. I was obsessed with Ninja Turtles as a kid. I I had like Ninja Turtle everything, and it was really cool to walk into C two E two with Frank Fosco, 
who did the Ninja Turtles back, you know, whenever I was that age. I wasn't old enough to read those comics, but I really, really appreciated that, and I've read them since, and I'm like, I wish I would have been old enough to, you know, read this kind of stuff, because I think it would have been awesome. Okay, um, Dark Reader 259 asks, what types of movies do you like? I like almost all types of movies. Um, I, I am huge in horror movies. Um, we just talked on the last panel, the panel that I did, and we're going to do like a special Halloween thing, talking about our favorite horror movies, and put them into categories, and I was totally like a Saw junkie. I did think that it needed to end. I don't, you know, I didn't like that it went to seven movies. I think it should have stopped at five, and all of that, but I, I, I love horror movies. Um, pretty much anything that's even sort of horror-ish, I will go and see. Um, of course, I love the superhero movies. Some of them I like more than others. Like, I still don't like Daredevil. I still don't... I'm still mad that they haven't released a Deadpool movie, even though I still don't like Ryan Reynolds and I don't want to see him play Deadpool. I feel like if you shot it, you should release it. Um, I've never been a fan of the Superman movies, but Superman is one of the reasons that I'm into comics. So, and it's not based off of a comic, it's based off of a television show. And I will get into that with a later question. But, I don't know. I mean, I like some comedy stuff. I like... I don't really like chick flicks at all. I like very, very few. Um, like, I've never seen The Notebook, and I never want to. Um, I was forced to watch Napoleon Dynamite in my foods class. Why? I'm not sure, but I thought that was, like, the stupidest movie. Um, one of my favorite movies is Donnie Darko. I love Donnie Darko. I love Frank the Rabbit. Um, that is not why I have a thing for bunnies. Um, but I love Frank the Bunny. One day Frank the Bunny will be tattooed on me. He is not currently, but one day he will be. Um, I do have a puzzle piece on my leg, though, for the Saw movies. Not that that was any part of the question, but my love for Saw movies runs runs skin deep, I guess. Um, what other movies? Another one of my random movie that, like, everybody likes, but everyone that I know likes it because they love to watch it when they're stoned, and I don't, I don't do that at all, so... You know, that's not what I like it for, but I I love Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. It's like a Sean and Marlon's Wayans movie, and it's so random, and I, I don't know, I've, I've liked it since I was in, like, junior high, like, for real. It's completely random, and it's probably something, like, not a lot of people have heard of, but if you've heard of it, like, you know about it. Um, also, there's, like, all the stuff that, like, Kevin Smith has done, like, Clerks, and Dogma, and, like, all of those kind of things, like... I don't know, there's so many movies. I should just do, like, the movie episode of something, because I could just talk about movies. Like, I love movies, and I've watched a ton. I don't watch them as much now as I used to, because, you know, I have priorities and things, but I'm, I'm a movie person, for sure. So, I hope that's sort of... And then, you know, I'll go and see, you know, Fast Five in a theater with Amish people. True story. In Fast Five sit down and then a bunch of Amish women women of all things no men just women I'm like wow the rock has powers he electrifies those with no electricity that's skill so and that's I'm not gonna go into any other characters in the movie or else it'll be a whole nother 10 minutes of yeah um ITFC53 asks do you think Marvel and DC are using crossovers too frequently yes um, I do not really agree with this Villains Month thing at all. While I like Forever Evil number one, and I've liked a lot of the one-shots that I've read too, I can't afford it. Like, last week I bought all of them, and this week I'm regretting it because I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have enough money to buy all my comics next week. Like, shouldn't have bought all these comics. I don't like they're doing this. I do not support this at all. And like I said, though, in my comic time last week, I feel like there's not a lot that... A single consumer can do about that it's mainly your comic shops what they order so the only way to truly get anything ha to happen with it is for shops not to order the titles and that's gonna be really hard to convince comic book stores not to do um, you know and if you guys don't agree with me on that I've read a ton of articles about you know why there are more female superheroes and why you know, this isn't a storyline ever, and it's like, because we try it and shops don't order it, and it's not about what consumers want, it's about what shops will buy. And so that's why, like, with the indie stuff, if your shop doesn't carry it, special order it, because then they, it, it comes up as an order, you know, one issue is better than none. But, yeah, I think they do too much, and I'm really hoping that it doesn't, it doesn't 
sell as well as they were hoping for because, you know, I don't want it every month. And I feel that they're even using too many things. Like, if you look at Marvel stuff, it's, like, all X-Men or Avengers. That's it. Like, that's the two things from Marvel. You know, everything is related to X-Men or the Avengers. And then pretty much everything that DC has is Spider-Man, Superman, or Batman, or a combination of the two. So I don't, I don't like it, but, you know, I'm one person. So unless I guess I convince a bunch of people or somehow get insanely popular to where comic book stores listen to me, I don't know that I'm going to be able to do anything about it. But yes, I think that they, there are too many crossovers and too, all of that, and I'm just, I don't know. All of that is going on, and I'm not a fan. Um, Sleepy Reader 666 asks, Are there comics that have really annoyed you? Yes. Um, I'm not going to get in. Like, I could go, you know, really in-depth with this. Um, if you saw my Dial H review, I wasn't a fan of Dial H at all. I didn't understand it. I've never read the second issue. I've always wanted to, like, even though I wasn't a fan... I wanted to read it just to see, like, oh, what is this about? Like, maybe in the second issue it makes more sense. Like, it's still going, so it has to be doing, you know, somewhat well. I just, I didn't understand it, and I'm sorry if that makes me sound like I'm stupid or something. Like, I'm, I'm not, I promise. <laughs> but I just, I didn't understand what was going on, and it annoyed me, because I was like, I've never read a comic through like this and had so many questions and been just so confused because things just didn't make sense and that's just not normal for me to read. Um, another one, what is it called? I don't even remember what it's called, but it is a Marvel comic from like 2003 I think and it was about like Peter Parker's aunt and uncle and like his mom and things like whenever they were younger and it was just so ridiculous. Like for real like who cares about what they did whenever they're younger and it was so inappropriate like who wants to watch these people like you know party and like have sex and stuff like it was just so awkward so awkward and I just it annoyed me that they even did that I was like really how desperate are you guys to make money that you are making this comic right now like there are other things in the world you know it's 2003 I believe is when it came out like make other things I really don't remember what the comic is called right now um I don't remember, but it didn't last very long, thank god. But, yeah, comics, and then there's just little things that annoy me, just, you know, all of the crossovers, all of the tie-ins, just all of that. I And I liked the Ultron series, but I felt like it drug. I don't know why, like, those ten issues, it took me forever to get through the first six, and then the last four went really, really quick. But... Just, I don't know, I'm just not a fan of, like, limited series, unless it's about, like, specific things. Like, if you're just gonna drag it out, just make it, like, one big series and keep it going. Like, I don't know, there, I have a lot of annoyances, I guess. Um, okay, and then the big question, which I'm not gonna go in depth because this video is already really long, and I feel bad that you guys are watching it. Um, I will answer my top five, and then in the com or in the information section, um... Whenever I get it written out, I will post sort of, like, why. I might go into a little bit into each as to why, but I'm not going to do, like, a long thing as to why. Just because there's five of them and I could go on for a while with them. So I'm just going to do it, you know, fairly quickly. Um, what are your top five favorite superheroes? Now, the keyword here is favorite. Not who I think is the best ever. Not who I think would win in a fight between, you know, this one and this one. It's just favorite, which just means I could, like... Captain America's shield and so hey he's a favorite he's not trust me he I don't he's not on my list at all um top five favorite Rorschach um I know a lot of people don't consider him to be superheroes but I do and I think he's awesome I have a rabbit named after him and he's so cute and fuzzy and I don't know I've always liked Rorschach he's always been my favorite in the comics in the movie I thought he was brilliantly portrayed in the movie and I don't know I just liked Rorschach because he didn't necessarily have powers but he, like, proved that you can you can change the world and you can get your point across just by being, you know, a random guy that eats beans. Like, I don't know. I liked him a lot. So Rorschach, number one. Or number five, I guess. Um, number four, he's my favorite because he is the first superhero, I guess, that I ever heard of. Um, he is the Hulk. I was terrified of him as a child. I think I've talked about it before. My brother traumatized me with the Hulk as a child. 
Um, I was so scared he was going to come and like kill me in my sleep and whatnot. It was horrible, but without him, there's so many things wouldn't, I wouldn't have, you know, learned what a superhero was. I wouldn't have, I don't know, like, I'm weird. Like, things that I used to be scared of as a child, I love now. Like, I'm just weird, and that's just how I, my, grow. And so, the fact that I was so scared of him, it makes me sort of appreciate him later on. So, I don't know if any of that makes sense, but the Hulk is my number four. Number three... I have to say Batman. Um, I'm not saying that he's, you know, not awesome. Like, if I had to just have all of these guys together, I would, but I can't. So Batman is up there. Um, you can't love Batman, and or you can't not love Batman. Um, I don't know, just... Even with Batman, even the stuff that I haven't read of his... Like, I haven't read everything Batman, I'm sorry. I have not read everything that is Batman. But I wish I could. I wish I did. Um, just, he's everywhere. I mean, he does so much stuff. He... I mean, Gotham is supposedly, you know, in Illinois, and that's where I'm from, so, mm -mm. you know, that's awesome. And just everything, like, everything that I loved as a child was Batman-related, whether it be roller coasters at Six Flags, you know, the movies, the, this, I think I was, like, Batgirl for Halloween one year, whenever I was, like, a really, really little kid. Like, I just, Batman has been such a staple of my childhood that, like, if I didn't put him in that list, like, it would just be ridiculous. Like, he's always been there and like even Batman is like the one thing that even if you don't like superheroes in comic books you love Batman like I don't know anyone that hasn't seen one of the Batman movies like even like my really girly friends that don't like superheroes they totally want to go see you know the Batman movies because they were awesome or you know the Heath Ledger thing and all of that and then they liked them they liked the movies so I feel like Batman is just like the ultimate superhero to get people into comics which sort of answers I guess one of an early questions, but yes, Batman. Um, number two, I'm gonna go back and just, I know I shouldn't put these people before Batman, but I'm gonna go with the Ninja Turtles, because they were, you know, I had the toys, I had everything, like, I was total Ninja Turtle girl. I wished I could have been April, she's my favorite. I was obsessed with pizza, and they are obsessed with pizza, like, I feel like I should have been a turtle. I loved turtles as a kid too, I had a turtle in my garden, his name was Toby, and he was awesome. So yes, I'm gonna say Ninja Turtles for that. And then my number one, I feel bad, um, cause I don't really necessarily read any of the comics that he's in. I don't like most of the movies that I've seen that, he, that have involved this character, but Superman, I don't even know that these are in, you know, specific orders, but Superman is what got me into wanting to, you know, check out comic book stores. Like, whenever I would go into comic book stores, I was like, oh, you know, Superman does this, mommy, Superman does that. I knew that because I used to watch the Dean Cain stuff with the real adventures of Lewis and Clark. Um, I convinced my parents. I was like four or five. Like, I was young when that came out. I don't know if any of you guys know what I'm talking about, but I was really young and I was like, mommy, we have to watch this because it's Superman and Superman's awesome and, you know, all of this. And I was so convinced. I'm like, this guy. And like, I wanted to be Superman. Like, I was jealous of Lewis Lane. I wanted to be Superman. I wanted, you know, Kryptonite. Like, I went to Girl Scout camp whenever I was younger, and there's a town in Illinois called Metropolis, and my parents went there. I was like, no, you got to see Superman. Like, I was so upset because they went to a town called Metropolis, and like, I've been there now, and it's totally like superman out. And Superman just means so many things to so many people. Like, there's, you know, a guy from where I'm from that he, as a child, he was, you know, ran over by a car on his bike, and he was in really bad shape, and Superman was how he got better. Like, everyone compared him to Superman, and Superman, I really believe, is what kept him going. You know, it's like his mascot now. Like, Superman is so, I mean, Batman is awesome to people, but so is Superman, and just the way that Superman helps people is awesome. Like, Batman is epic, and everyone loves Batman, but I feel like Superman helps more people, and like, I feel like Superman helped me as a child, because I could watch that show and not be ashamed of it. And whereas I would watch wrestling and get made fun of. I would, you know, watch this show and get made fun of. Like, everything else. But everybody watched the Superman show. And everybody knows Dean Cain now. He is, like, forever Superman. So, I don't know. That's all I have for that. Um, with this video, I am going to be doing a giveaway. Um, not next Wednesday, but on the 25th. Okay, originally I wanted to do this Q&A because I thought it was my anniversary of YouTube. It is my anniversary of YouTube, but it's my anniversary of when I first signed up for YouTube. It's not the anniversary of my first video. My first video was published on the 25th of March. So I want to do a giveaway on the 25th of September, which is a Wednesday, so it will be on a Comic Time episode. But 
I don't have all the stuff for the giveaway. I think it's just going to be a gift card, and then it just depends on the winner, like, where they're from. Um, I might do, like, a Forbidden Planet kind of thing if it's, like, someone in the UK um, or somewhere over there. Um, I might do, you know, the one that I did last time from from Midgard or whatever. Um, Midgard's where I go. Mid Midtown. I might do one from Midtown, or if you have a favorite comic book store that has, like, online gift cards, you know, I'll, I'll ask, but I'm just gonna do a giveaway. So I just want to know, you know, two things. Um, you can answer either one of them. One, I want to know just honestly what you think of, you know, the past six months of my videos. You know, what you would do differently if you were me. You know, what works, what doesn't work. Because some of these videos are really like, including this one, so if you don't make it to this part, I'm really sorry. I'll continue to mention it for the next couple weeks. But, you know, just, I don't know, give me some sort of criticism. Um, you can do that, or I want you to tell me in just list, I don't need explanations because I don't want a comment that's like 10 miles long, but I want to know what your top three superheroes are. And if you don't like superheroes, then that's weird because I don't know of anybody who hates all superheroes, but if you for some reason do, I guess just top three comics. Um, and then I don't expect a superhero title to be in that because you don't like superheroes. So that's all I have. Um, I don't have a specified amount for these gift cards. Lowest value would be $20. I don't know the highest value yet. Um, I have two weeks to figure that out, so <laughs> I'm going to work on that. I guess it just depends on where you live and stuff, because if I have to spend, like, $20, like, in pounds, then that's going to be more than $20, but it'll just be $20 for you, which that's fine. That's not complaining about that. As long as you don't live somewhere where I have to spend, like, $300 to give you $20, I'm okay with it. So please... Please take, please take pity on, on my exchange rate if you live somewhere else. Um, don't, don't comment, I guess, if it's going to cost me a lot of money. Or just be happy with, you know, an American gift card. Um, so yeah, that's all I have. So I guess leave comments if you'd like to enter the contest. And thank you for watching my very long question and answer video. And I hope to do this again you know, with my one year, um, which will be in six months. So I will see you guys next time. Bye!